All right, slowly getting people to join the call. We are back for our Tuesday talks. Hello, hello for all of those that are joining in. We have uh, Dave joining us from Aptos, and I see your request, and I am going to... Josh, welcome back. Um, Dave, I am letting you join, so you will be on with us shortly. Hello, Gabby. Hello, Marina. Um, all right. Hi, David. How are you? Hey, Melissa. I'm great. Thanks. How are you? I'm good. Excited to have you join us today. We've got lots of questions already coming in. Um, your lighting looks great. Uh, awesome. Hi, Lane. I'm slowly saying hi to people as they join into the call. So for great. everybody, we have our Tuesday Talks. And we have our guest, David Bruno, from Aptos today. And we are going to dive into the ins to order management, POS system, and how to make the experience as successful as possible across channels for your customers. So before that, David, please say hello to everybody. Yeah, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm excited for the conversation today. Order management, uh, as bad as this is going to make me sound, is kind of a passion for me. So don't judge, don't judge me, Melissa. Passion. Listen to me. Businesses only work if you have people that are passionate about all these aspects and then it comes together as a team, right? Hi, Pan City. Are you joining us from Spain? We love having you on the on air. Everybody feel free to chime in with your questions. So, David, why don't you quickly tell everybody um, what you do at Aptos? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm a... Uh, very uh, 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 vague title. I'm a marketing director. Um, what that means in the real world is I spend a lot of time helping retailers, uh, helping communicate with retailers and understand how our solutions can solve the problems that they face every day. And as it relates to our audience today, most of our customers, we have about a thousand retailers worldwide. Melissa, I'm telling you, there's probably less than a couple of dozen that order management isn't on uh, top of mind of somebody in their business. So I have lots of conversations with retailers every week about this topic. Well, we're excited about it because it comes up even in pop-up shops. And a lot of the times, sure. you know, brands are trying to figure out what do I sell? How do I plan my store staff? How do I plan for replenishment? Um, how do I make sure that my online system and my in-store are all working well together. So I think it's going to be a great conversation. Um, and I and we have some questions that have already been sent in, but everybody joining us, um, feel free to live chat in your questions and we'll be we'll do our best to answer them. Um, so one of the first is when you talk about um, <laughs> jo Pan City is so funny. He's saving some excitement for us all in Spain. He just wanted us to know that. So thanks for chiming in on that, Pan City. But feel free to ask any questions on order management, too. Um, but so when you talk about that, you say a lot of the brands don't think about it. What are some of the top pain points that you're solving for? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, Melissa, you and I have talked about this, I think, a couple of times in some of our conversations. The, the, the fundamental building block before you can do anything is inventory. You've got to get your arms around your inventory. Um, most of the customers that we work with uh, have sort of figured out uh, order order fulfillment, order management from a warehouse orders. But the minute you get the store involved, the first gigantic problem you've got to solve is, is inventory in the stores. Making it available to the customers to see so they're buying with confidence. They know that the inventory is in stock. And then as importantly is figuring out how to reserve that inventory and making sure that somebody in the store, somebody in the store staff can go get it uh, and hold it for the customer for either for shipment or, or for pickup. And I tell you, it, it, it's not easy. Um, we've got an inventory, a very robust inventory system that's baked into our order management system. But first and foremost, they've got to get their processes right. They've got to get their inventory accurate. They've got to figure out a way to make sure that uh, it's timely when receipts happen. Uh, they've got to get their sales data. You know, nightly polling is no longer good enough, right? Back up to corporate. So there are some procedural and process things that have to get in place as well as the technology and we, we try to help them with both but obviously process is a big part of that's a big part of their retailers responsibility yeah so i think let's start with that uh gabby uh, asked can you elaborate on how using an order management solution helps retailers but i think let's step back in the process as you just mentioned like what is the first step because i think okay we know that you have to have inventory and there's always a question how much is in store how much is drop ship so what is your first step? Like, what 
what should they be thinking about in order to um, think through that process? Sure, sure. It's a great question. Uh, and we get it all the time. Uh, and while the answer, there's a couple of good answers, uh, sometimes, you know, chicken or the egg. First and foremost, you have to understand how to get your arms around your inventory. I, I, not to re repeat and you know and, and beat a dead horse here, Melissa, but you've got to get your inventory right. And there's a, a bunch of complexity around that, including uh, this notion of safety stock. So when you're talking about inventory in a store, right, you're vulnerable to customers who have the inventory in their hands or in their basket that it, the systems think the inventory is still available, but maybe it's in the fitting room and she's trying it on before she takes it to the register. So understanding what's available in the stores, understanding how quickly you can get that information back to corporate so that can be exposed to the shop online shoppers, and then understanding your tolerance levels for, uh, I use the word safety stock, it's a bit of an antiquated term, but it's the most descriptive to be safe to what you're going to promise the customer. So that's number one. And your Number recommendation, two, how much, and your recommendation, like, how much safety stock should we have? Like, two extra of each? Yeah, that's, uh, there's no easy answer there. That's typically, uh, most of the time, that's a category by category decision. So if it's fast moving, you know, depending on, again, the vertical that you're in, and then the categories within that vertical. But if it's a high volume, high turnover product, you're going to want a higher safety stock than perhaps something that's either higher ticket, limited availability, and or slower turning. So it's a category by category decision, for sure. Uh, I wish I could say there's a stock answer, mm -hmm. but roughly 10%, which feels like okay. a huge number, but, but it's again, good to have a there's only 10 items in the store, you know, you, you, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna make promises you can't deliver, for sure. Customers. So homework assignment for the brands are get your inventory in order, think through what yes. that safety stock should be, think about your customer, right? And uh, they have to try it on, maybe they're taking off the shelf, all of that. And then at what yep. point are they ready to work with an Aptos system? Like, what, are there any other, like, if you had a checklist, this is what you should have yes. in order before you're ready for our platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great, great way to frame that. Number two is embrace the idea of payroll in the store going up payroll said going this, up <laughs> yes because people underestimate this and again some of this depends on again your particular business and you know if you're at, if you're expecting one order a day to be picked up in store or shipped from store that's very different but if depending on the size of the footprint of the store the number of employees that you have working in a store at any given time you can't underestimate the importance of the customer experience. What happens to the customer experience if I only have two sales associates on the floor and I have to go pick 10 orders? Mm -hmm. What happens to the store customers? So again, depending on volume, but hopefully thinking optimistically that we're going to put this program in place and people are going to take advantage of it and they want orders either picked up in store or shipped from store, you have to understand there are customer service implications. How do I balance what the customers in the stores need versus the customers who are giving me their money? It's it's tempting, right? I got money in yes. the hand. Go ahead and sell it to them. How do I manage those two conf potentially conflicting processes? So that's checklist number two before you ever talk to somebody like us. Right. So they really have to think through that in-store experience a little bit. And it's interesting because we get calls a lot in the office about payroll or how do we think of staff? And we have this similar exercise as well. Well, what is the store experience going to be? And are you going to have inventory? And, you know, um, a lot has to be thought about with this customer experience so that you have the right staff to support that. How much lead time do you usually need to set up a POS or order management system? Yeah, uh, so that varies widely. And I hate to say, you know, I feel like I'm answering a couple of these questions with it depends, which is an awful answer. That's okay. Um, it comes out. It's the answer we give a lot of the times too. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's an initial time where the store operations people at corporate, typically at, a, at headquarters with typically some key store managers will be involved. There's a set of time initially, which is probably 
a few weeks of understanding your business processes and how to apply them to our systems, how to adapt your processes to our systems. You know, one thing we don't like people to do is just say, okay, buy a new system to repeat exactly what you're doing today. So how do you take advantage of the best practices that have been baked into whichever technology you're buying from whichever vendor, right? That typically is a reflection of the practices of a bunch of customers. So how do I marry those things, adapt my processes, adapt the switches and the configurations in the system? So depending on your complexity and the number of stores and the types of stores that you have, a couple, three weeks to get that set up. And then you put a change management program in place, which is... That's so not what exactly is what's a change management program? So let's take a typical let's just take a typical Aptos customer. Okay, I don't I don't know if this is typical of the people that are listening today, but a typical Aptos customer is going to be in multiple geographies, meaning multiple countries, and they're going to have dozens to hundreds of stores. Mm -hmm. And typically, there is a handful of people in the corporate office that are managing this project. So somehow that handful, maybe two handfuls of people, depending on how many stores, but they have to figure out how to take all these decisions, all of these process changes, all of the training that's required. Now, you know, it, it's modern stuff and modern te technology and tools make it pretty easy to make the interface intuitive. But nonetheless, there are process changes that every single store person has to figure out how to adopt and adapt to. So you need a program. It says, how do I roll this out to hundreds or thousands of employees when I've got a small handful of people that are intimate with the process? So figure out your process change, your, your software, align your software, your processes, then design a change management program. This is how we're going to roll this out to the stores. Build enthusiasm, build training programs, and typically what we recommend is you build a kit. Here's my store kit that's separate from the software. Right. You know, the mm -hmm. software is going to be in the cloud mostly, and that's almost a seamless thing anymore, thankfully. But the process change and the change management is something that uh, often gets underestimated and is never undervalued when it's done well. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that, it's interesting. Even two. in pop ups, we're doing that, right? I mean, you always have to be A B testing. You have to see what's working. You have to understand, you know, what, what, what modification should be made. And, and definitely, if you have a fleet of locations, making sure that, that there's a clear communication system. I think the kit makes a ton of sense. And overall training. I mean, training is so underestimated, I think. And there's a lot of assumptions that if store A knows what's going on, stores B, C, and D do. Um, yeah. But a lot of the times, there's that disconnect. Have you seen, and you and I have talked about this, this ever-evolving world of temporary retail and pop-ups and stuff. Yes. How is your business seeing that challenge and how are you working with brands that are doing these shorter term experiences? Yeah, yeah, just, uh, order question. yeah, 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 that's a great question. And I have to say, Melissa, you, uh, you, when you and I've spoken a couple of times, this idea of this kit and this training and this entire program putting together for pop-ups, I think I used to underestimate that until I started talking and working with you. So, uh, I totally agree with you. And, um, and interestingly, since you and I have started uh, some of our conversations and programs together, um, I've really dug into our client base to answer the question. And we have some customers who are doing some fascinating things uh, with pop-ups from uh, very large scale pop-ups, uh, what, I, what I tend to call upscale pop-ups, which are big investments in design and marketing and location planning, um, customers like uh, Boot Barn, they're a boot retailer. They do uh, seven rodeos a year, and they're as long as three weeks long, which is not necessarily long, I know, to many of your customers, but three weeks of uh, rodeo time, 9,000 square foot stores, fully visually merchandised to be on brand and on message those rodeos. And um, uh, we support them. They actually bring full blown point of sale systems to those. Um, rodeos and treat them like another store. Mm -hmm. They go every year. So it makes comp sales reporting and some of those performance statistics pretty easy because they those stores are consistent. Uh, but then we have other customers who are a little more um, uh, uh, whose pop ups are a little more agile. Uh, yeah. We have one customer, um, uh, Cole, Cole Hahn, who popped up a store in our booth at NRF. 
Uh, they, they have NRF is the big trade show in New York City mm -hmm. every year. Thousands and thousands, about 30,000 people from across the industry get together. They use our software for a whole bunch of things, including uh, mobile point of sale and order management. And they contacted us and said, hey, let's pop up a booth, uh, uh, pop up a store in your booth. We have this new line of shoes. And to do that, all they brought were uh, three or four iPad minis, a charging unit, and uh, the credit card is called a sled that attaches to the back of right. the tablet for, for credit card swipe and authorization and a VPN device. So they had a secure connection and uh, one pair of shoes in every size. They had 24 pairs of shoes in the booth and they ended up being the top performing store in the chain by literally just popping up in a trade show booth where people's feet hurt. You know, and people don't really think about, people call our office all the time trying to think through what's the right location for my pop-up. And most times they don't think of trade shows. So I found it actually really interesting when you told me about this case study. And there was no inventory, right? It was all drop ship. Right. It was all drop ship. It was literally, the. I, I, I don't know the exact number. I, I, it, anecdotally, I want to say between 80 and 90%, but don't quote me. I, I don't remember where it ended up. But as I was talking to the folks from Cole Hahn in our booth, they said, you know, almost nine out of 10 people, before they got back to their hotel, the shoes were waiting for them in their room. Very so cool. they were doing uh, literally couple hour delivery. So the order would come in to the booth. Again, we had a trade show booth where we're selling software. We didn't have a whole bunch of space allocated for a whole bunch of pairs of shoes, right? out of each size and then when the customer tried them on and they placed their order and immediately uh, order management routed it to the soho store for cole Han, where the soho store people ba ba bagged it up but put it in a bag and sent it out through third-party courier to get it to the hotels um so your solutions kind of will help bring that all together yeah. your solutions sorry i'm sorry to hear you your solutions will help bring those third parties together um, so it's an easy kind of plug and play experience. Like how do your solutions well, in your are, Yeah, I mean, this, to, to be honest, that's not really a technology decision. At that, that point, the system knows, okay, I'm going to ship this order via FedEx. This one's going third party and we allocate it. And if, and yes, we can allocate to uh, interface to couriers, but it's usually uh, not necessary. You know, it just turn, turns into, they, they run that sort of as a standalone relationship with the third party, you know, like Uber, companies yeah. like that. So, it's so how did you say, simple. we have a question in from Lore, Lore D. <laughs> how, yes. how would you say that your solutions enhance customer experience? Like, you know, what, what if you were to say that this is, is it the seamlessness of it? Is it the accuracy of it? Like, how would, how would you describe it? Yeah, so there's a couple of things. First and foremost, uh, harping on this a little bit, but we do a pretty good job of making sure that we our, our retailers, our customers, can keep their promises to their customers. And so when you talk about store fulfillment in particular, Melissa, you and I have talked about this, a buy online pickup in store <laughs> transaction is probably the most vulnerable a retailer is at any kind of transaction. Mm -hmm. Because I've taken your money and you've said, I'm going to not only give you my money before the stuff is shipped. Now I'm going to get in my car or get on the subway. I'm going to give you my time and I'm going to go to the store and pick it up. So if we screwed up on inventory and that product isn't available and we can't give you that, you show up in that store. You've given me my money and your time, giving me your money and your time. That's a big brand hit. So we do a very good job at helping retailers keep their promises. We also do a pretty good job, I think, and this is not only dependent upon the software and the technology, but again, this goes back to processes of giving the customer the flexibility that, you know, people don't want to be limited. Yeah. So if the processes are aligned and the technology is aligned, it gives them those seamless experiences and the flexibility they want for instant gratification, speed, choice, uh, convenience, all of those things. And, and those are really important today to, to stay competitive with the biggest companies on the planet, which are, which are doing that. Yeah, today. flexibility, speed, and convenience. It's all about map, meeting the customers where they expect to be met, right? That's right. So That's I right. think it's great that you have solutions that could provide that and um, make it as possibly as seamless as possible. So I'm going to look over here. Let's see. Um, we got a question in from Meg or 88. Uh, is there a solution you recommend that is best for shorter term retail? Well, I, 
I don't have a specific company in mind, so I apologize for that. If that's the question, is there a, is there, is there a company in mind um, to recommend? You might know better than I, Melissa. All of the customers that we sell to are customers who do pop ups as an add on to permanent locations and permanent you know websites and things. So I don't I don't have much experience with companies that are really targeted towards uh, just short term retail. So do you work with companies that do it as part of their uh, broader base strategies? Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah understood on that one. Um, I guess one other question I'll ask then is, um, so there's the upfront planning and that checklist of things that have to be done. And then there's kinds of the things to remember as you're walking, you know, dealing with your order management. But what I want to end with, what I think is always really important is uh, name, like what are the top three things customers can learn, like from the analytics and data that you guys provide of how their uh, systems are helping them perform. Yeah, and I know you're very passionate about this, about the learning, uh, particularly with pop-ups. But this this question, I know you didn't intend it to be a, exclusively a pop-up question. Correct. Um, I, I, I think the most important thing, the first thing you've got to understand, because there, there, there are so many facets to this. How's my merchandise performing, right? How are my associates performing? Um, there are so many questions to understand. But at the end of the day, the most important question is, are my customers coming back to the brand? And if the answer to that is yes, great, keep doing what you're doing, don't rest on your laurels, obviously, continue to invest and expand and, and, and engage. But I think the more important part is if you're not seeing the repeat business that you're expecting of customer, you know, average order, average lifetime value of your customer, average order value uh, uh, of your individual orders is not where you want it to be, then it's important to start breaking down the different channels, understand how many orders are fulfilled on time, how many shopping carts are abandoned, what's the transaction time, how, how many uh, sales associates do I have on the floor and how many orders are they spent picking so you can start to piece together that puzzle of why my experience isn't driving more return visits and larger orders. You know, mm -hmm. the other side of that is product, and product always is important. But first and foremost, we, we, we try to start with uh, the experience because most of these companies, product, they, they figured out how to get assortments that people want. So it's if it is an assortment, it's experience, and that's where we try to help them start and then get into the assortment as the second level of investigation. Well, we are definitely in an experience economy, yeah, and sure. uh, customer expectations sure. are very high, and yes. they are – used to getting things on demand and they don't want to hear I don't have it. So I think that um, being able to see those type of analytics on the back end and understanding how staffing is impacting it and all of that is really important for a brand. So if people want to follow after this, uh, where can they follow you guys? Is it at, uh, at Aptos Retail? What would be the best way? Yeah, uh, well, I'm at Dave the Wave SD for San Diego because I spend most of my spare time at the beach. Uh, I know That's it's silly, but you can beach. yeah, you can certainly reach out to me directly um, uh, or at Aptos Retail on Twitter, Facebook, or uh, LinkedIn. Our our Instagram account is actually for philanthropy. It's Aptos Cares at Aptos Cares. You can certainly reach us through that, but most of the content you'll see there is our philanthropic side of our business. So any of those options would be great. Or just aptos.com and uh, submit a, a, a contact us. Okay, I just got away from Aptos Cares. Hi, guys. Well, <laughs> thanks for being a guest with us today. I think that it was really informational. It's definitely questions we get all the time, thinking through inventory and staffing and customer service. And I always say to people, don't forget about the analytics. Um, but this is helpful. This will live live for the next 24 hours on our Insta Live. And um, if you have more questions, definitely feel free to follow David. Yeah. Talk Thank you so much, soon. Melissa. This was great. I appreciate it, as always. I always learn something from you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks.